Hi. Now in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can convert parametric equations which contain trig functions into Cartesian equations. And to do this kind of type of question, what you've got to be familiar with is trig identities. We've got to find some trig identity that can link them together. Take for instance number one. What kind of identity do you think links cos theta and sine theta together? Well, you might think immediately that, ah, it's tan theta. Tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. Well, that's no good because it still involves a trigonometric function. We want something that links these together which is independent of any further trigonometric functions. So what is it? Well, it is cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is identical to 1. Or sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is identical to 1. It doesn't matter which way around, obviously. But it's independent of any other trig function. So, we can work out what cos theta is here in terms of x. If we divide both sides by 2, we can see that from, well, we better number this, I think. Let's say number 1, and we'll call this number 2. So from equation 1, we can see that cos theta equals x over 2. And from equation 2 here, if we divide both sides by 5, we can see that from 2, sine theta equals y over 5. And, okay, I might have been thinking this, but if I was writing it down for real, I would say something like, since cos squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1, notice how I've changed the identical sign to an equals here, because we're getting a Cartesian equation. Then, if I square this, we're going to have x squared over 4, and I can substitute it in here. We would therefore have x squared over 4 plus, and for sine squared theta, if we square this, we've got y squared over 5 squared, which is 25. And that would equal 1. And I could leave it like that if I wanted to. I could times both sides by a number that 4 and 25 go into. That's 100. If I times this by 100, I therefore end up with 25x squared times this by 100, and I get 4y squared. And then the 1 by 100 just gives me 100. Either way, any of these versions I'm sure would do. OK, well that gives you, hopefully, some idea on handling Question 1. You might like to have a go at this one. Try and think of some identity that links sine theta with cos 2 theta. OK, well let's see. How did you get on? Did you come up with that identity? Let's just come down here. So for number 2, what did you think of? Well, we've got to turn our attention to cos 2 theta. Do you remember that cos 2 theta was identical to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta? Okay, a well-known identity. So that's what I would have basically been thinking about. So knowing that I'm going to head towards that, I want to label my equations. Let's call this one and this one number two. And I would say that from 1, we need to make sine theta the subject. So from 1, if we divide both sides by 4, sine theta equals x over 4. I don't really need to do anything with this. I've got it here. I'd remind the reader what equation I'm using. So I'd say since cos 2 theta is equal to, change the identity to an equals here, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. 
I would therefore have, and in place of cos 2 theta, I'd write the y, and it would equal 1 minus 2 times sine squared theta. So I'd need to square this term, and I'd get x squared over 4 squared, which is going to be 16. The 2 sixteenths now, that cancels, 2 goes into 2 once, that goes into that 8 times, so I would therefore have y equals 1 minus x squared over 8. And I think I'd leave it like that. I've got it in the form y equals, so that seems okay, really. If you wanted to, you could times through by 8. You'd get 8y equals 8 minus x squared. Give that as a version as well. Okay, leave it up to you anyway. Well again, I hope that's given you some idea then of how you handle trigonometric types. Look for an identity that links your trig functions together.